If you're placing a dental implant, and at the time of placing the implant, you place a transmucosal healing abutment. The transmucosal healing abutment typically comes in a, in a narrow, a regular, and a wide profile. And most people usually sit, uh, place a regular healing abutment onto their implant. What that means is, is that when you take your impression, if you're lucky, you have more attached or keratinized gingiva around your implant. Well, that's a good thing, right? Because you want a collar of keratinized gingiva around your implant because it's the tough stuff, right? It's like a callus. It's the good stuff, right? You don't want mucosa that's stretchy, okay? So you go, well, well, okay, that's good. But then when my crown comes back, the crown doesn't seat. I go to put it in the mouth and there's too much soft tissue in the way, right? And some people, they, they really think this is a bad thing. And it's not at all. This is a beautiful thing. To have all of that tissue around your implant is gorgeous. Now, how should you proceed to get the implant to seat? And it's very, very simple. You simply get the patient numb. You do a little injection right around the top of the, right around the, top of the implant, at the platform of the implant. Get the papilla in that area numb. You take a 15 blade, remove the healing abutment, and then make a crustal incision, slightly cheated towards the palate, and that's it. You don't have to elevate the tissue or anything. You're just going to you're going to separate the circumferential fibers with a crustal incision, slightly to the palate, and then you're going to take take your prosthesis and place it into the mouth. And as you screw it into position, because the prosthesis, if the implant was placed properly. We'll have an emergence profile that looks like this. It's going to look like a heart shape coming out with a nice S curve. It's going to push the tissue away. So it's going to act like a wedge, just like if you were chopping a, a, a block of wood. 